Hey everyone, Yogdog here. Good morning. I hope you're all having a lovely day so far. Uh, welcome to the launch day stream for Headquarters World War II. Uh, today there will be a selection of streams to look forward to, uh, but first we'll be going through the second mission of the German campaign, as well as exploring what assets the budding commander will have available to them during the course of any missions they may complete. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do really quickly is turn the volume down here, uh, just so you can hear me properly. Uh, if you have any questions or queries about the game uh, to anyone in chat, uh, please feel free to ask. I will answer them as best I can. Uh, Grim Harbinger, Praetorian Zach, Chime Pal, good morning to you all. I hope you're all doing well so far today. So I just want to make sure I get YouTube chat up here really quickly as well. Uh, and then I think... We are good to go. Okay, so we're going to be playing as Germany. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, mission two, the retreat to Khan. So let's uh, launch in here and let's get our organization done. So before any missions you need to complete in the campaign, um, you will have to decide what sort of forces you're going to be using. Um, so you do have your core troops, which you'll be managing in between uh, the various scenarios. And this applies to the Germans, the Brits, and the Americans. Um, all of which have different units based on, historically, uh, what sort of equipment they had at this stage in the war. Uh, so... As we're playing as the Germans here, uh, we're going to take a look at their unit list in a moment. Um, but before you do, you should always make sure you take a look at the map. Because this is going to be uh, pretty useful to decide what sort of troops you want to take onto the field of battle. Um, so if it's a heavily urban area, you're probably going to want to use uh, snipers, flamethrowers, uh, artillery to destroy cover and break up buildings to uh, open up actual uh, chances to hit an opponent. Uh, whereas something like tanks wouldn't be very good. Now for this particular mission, uh, Khan is... It has a few buildings here and there. We have quite a few trees all over the place. The heavily forested areas are going to offer good cover, as well as obscuring any advances. Um, so I'm going to need to make sure I take a scouting contingent of some sort. Uh, and I suspect that uh, artillery would be a good shout as well. Good morning to you, Necrotic Nexus. Good to see you, dude. Uh, right, so let's uh, let's manage our units. So we do have a uh, a few units here, which are our core units. These will be taken from scenario to scenario. If you lose them in a scenario, you don't permanently lose them. You will get them back for the next scenario. Um, but ideally, you'd, well, you'd probably want to keep them alive so you've got a better chance of completing any missions. Now, I am leaning towards taking an artillery piece. Um, I think I'm probably going to swap out the Kubelwagen. Now, depending on what units uh, you want to get, you will be spending prestige. Uh, so this is the currency which is used to pay for uh, any units you want to pick here. So swapping a Kubelwagen to say, I don't know, a Panzer III N uh, is going to take 220 prestige off of me. Um, which leaves me less prestige for buying other units. So, utilizing your prestige in a way where you've got enough to potentially pay for any future units you want to pay for, um, but as well as making sure you've got enough for the scenario you're playing, is an important facet uh, to consider. Now, going through the unit list here, uh, so this early in the campaign, uh, we have access to... Uh, several different specialized infantry squads as well as a general rifleman uh, rifleman squad here so these are kind of like your bread and butter they get access to anti-tank grenades so if there is something like uh, a half track or uh, some of the lighter tanks in the area these are quite effective or can be quite effective but they're not really something you can rely on to destroy heavier armor. 
So things like Churchill's, if you're playing as Germany, well, this isn't really something to be able to rely on. And you have to be adjacent to an opponent. You're putting your riflemen in a lot of danger. That being said, it's quite a big squad uh, with five members, which is great for survivability. It means it can lose a couple of models, um, a couple of your soldiers, and still be operating with some form of combat power. Uh, moving on, we then have mortars, which are your close range uh, indirect fire. Uh, these are really helpful, although you um, I tend to like bringing heavier artillery uh, further into the campaign, but early on these mortars are extremely effective um, and they, they certainly have their moments where they shine. Do, 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 do. Hey Jerome, T2, good to see you both. Uh, the stream is a Steam isolated event, there's Yogdog streaming, not in DE, but the German campaign. Uh, there were some last minute changes, Jerome, I believe, um, so I volunteered to uh, do the stream this morning. Um, so I, uh, I will be your host for today. Hope you're having a good day, Jerome. So going back to the mortars here, they have a decent amount of HE damage, which is quite nice. Um, they're not very good at dealing with armoured opponents, but, you know, in a pinch, they they can put some hurt onto um, any armoured units you go up against. And they also break up buildings, uh, which are occupied, again, meaning your standard, say, riflemen or machine guns or something else, has more of a chance to hit any enemies which are inside. Another thing to consider is they can deploy smoke shells at longer range. So um, if you want to obscure an advance or just try and conceal some troops, being able to deploy some smoke on, on command from your mortars is extremely helpful. Uh, next up we have machine guns, uh, so MG42s uh, for Germany specifically. Uh, these are pretty damn good for pinning down a well holding down a location against any infantry which might push into an area. They are extremely damaging uh, just because you know Hitler's buzzsaw was uh, a term for a reason it's fair to say uh, and uh, you wouldn't be want to be on the receiving end of uh, one of these which is set up in a in a good position. So these these machine guns, if utilized correctly, can be an extremely powerful component of your force. Um, and I find that I like using them quite defensively to, say, hold a flank um, in general. It's a little bit harder to be aggressive with them, but if you are able to, uh, to work out how to do that, a very potent unit under your command. Next up we have snipers, so these are the glass cannons of your infantry forces. Uh, very, very accurate, as would be expected, but they are very, very vulnerable. Um, if something gets even a half decent shot on them, they only have two models. They're very easy to be wiped out, so you're going to want to keep them as concealed as possible. Now. Uh, one of the main abilities you should probably be building around here is that uh, the unit can attack with uh, double accuracy, basically. Which means that if you're struggling to hit an enemy in a building, what well, this is an extremely useful unit in order to actually start inflicting some losses or outright destroy them. So, I think having a sniper around is generally advised. Uh, they're also quite good scouts if you use, if you're a little bit careful with them, uh, because they have quite con high con uh, camouflage. Next up is flamethrowers. So again, they're a little bit vulnerable, just due to only having three models in their squad, and they're meant to be very close to uh, the front line. Their flamethrowers do not have a particularly long range. Uh, when compared to riflemen, they only have three members, the riflemen have five. But if you are able to engineer the situation, say, in heavy urban terrain, 
uh, where you are able to get your flamethrowers uh, very close to enemy positions, then they get a guaranteed um, quite high damage hit onto an enemy unit, potentially wiping it out on one shot, depending on what sort of uh, squad it is. So uh, these are very much useful assault troops in terrain where you can get them close. So forested areas, well heavily forested areas, um, heavy locations with a ton of buildings. Flamethrowers are probably going to be your go-to uh, to actually clear out uh, enemy infantry formations hold up in buildings. You're most likely to want to drop some mortar fire or some heavy artillery on them to demoralize the enemy unit first so that these don't get overwatched. Uh, but if you are able to make it so you get in close range, these are great. Next up is the anti-tank team. Uh, so the Germans get access to Panzerschrecks, which are an extremely effective anti-tank capability. As well as that, they can also damage buildings. Um, quite low profile, which means they're difficult to spot. And a negative target, uh, target size modifier when firing against it, which is nice. Um, Ideally, you're probably still going to want to rely on he uh, heavier armor to deal with enemy tanks. But, again, urban terrain, anti-tank teams, ambushing enemy uh, vehicles, going to be quite potent. And then one of the more important infantry units, I'd say. Uh, possibly even the most important scouts. So these are... Uh, also fairly big squads at five men, which gives them a little bit of survivability. Uh, so the same as riflemen, really. But the next thing to consider, and what you'll be building around, is going to be visibility scouts. So all infantry get low profile, which is great. But um, quite a few of them have their individual abilities, which are quite helpful. So like, for example, we mentioned snipers get sniper shot. Well, scouts get scouts. What does scout mean? Uh, the unit identifies all enemy units within the radius ignoring line of sight, and the radius is three tiles. Now, uh, I feel that the game very much encourages working on combined arms gameplay, so you're going to be synchronizing, pushing forward uh, with your infantry, calling in artillery to deal with enemy strong points and demoralize uh, any enemy infantry formations you might find uh, and then using armor to like shock attack certain areas so scouting is going to be paramount if you want to be able to avoid enemy ambushes find out where concentrations of enemy troops is in order to actually just kill them at range of artillery and uh, in general it's just a very important component of your force so they're not the most potent in terms of outright damage uh, due to their weapon set, mainly being bolt action rifles. Um, and they don't get access to things like anti tank grenades, but they're going to enable your other forces to actually work to the best of their ability. Um, and survive the battle, quite frankly. So, scouts are an extremely uh, important unit, and I pretty much advise having one in most of your uh, formations you can work with. So, moving on to vehicles, we are fairly early into the campaign here, so it's mainly sort of older armor and light vehicles we've got access to. Although, as you progress through the campaign, you do unlock uh, additional units. Uh, so, for example, we only have Panzer Freeze here. But there are Tigers, Panthers, King Tigers, uh, things like uh, heavier Churchills, like Churchill AVREs and so on, if you're playing as Britain, for example, uh, later in the game. So, you'll, uh, as much as we only have access to some of the older armor here, there are plenty of things to look forward to uh, further into the game. But, starting off, we got the Kubelwagen, which is another scout, albeit this one is motorized. It's uh, It's got a little bit of armor, so we can actually see the various armor types here. 
Uh, so we got your front, your top, your side, and your back armor. Typically, pretty much every vehicle has the armor highest on the front, uh, then side armor, then back armor, and then top armor. Um, so, as we'll see in, when we get into game before long, you do want to keep your front armor pointed at the enemy as much as possible in order to try and mitigate uh, as much damage as possible. But Kubel Wagons have 15 armor all over, which basically means they are extremely vulnerable. Um, these are a motorized scout, but if it actually goes up against anything of substance, it's not going to last too long. Avoiding ambushes is overrated, just flame throw everything. I, uh, I, I can't disagree with that. I, I think flamethrowers are extremely fun to use. Armor's overrated too, just don't get hit. If only with it were that easy, taps forehead. And I actually did tap forehead though. Um, so, once again they get access to smoke grenades, which does aid in their survivability somewhat. And they're more rapid, uh, thanks to being in a Kubel wagon, uh, than your foot scouts. But you still need to be quite careful with them. Um, and things like heavy terrain is going to stop them compared to, say, foot scouts. Uh, moving on is the first of our armoured units. Um, so, as stated early on in the campaign here, so we have what at this stage of the war was pretty, much, pretty obsolete, really. Um, for anti-tank fighting, but still useful in support roles. We have Panzer 3Es and Panzer 3Ns. So the Panzer 3E actually has a lot less armor, um, which is most unfortunate, really. Uh, but on the plus side, it is cheaper, uh, full 100 prestige less. So if you are more economically minded with your prestige here, it is a uh, a decent option um, and it still gets access to the tank machine gun which means if an enemy unit is within four tiles its HE attack is increased by 25 so against things like infantry formations in, in close range this will do a, a fine job really um, just need to be a little bit careful with it, considering if it goes up against something like a Sherman, it's probably not going to do particularly well, it's fair to say. Hey, Edmund. Tactics are overrated. Just send wave after wave of your own men at them. Have, have you watched me play video games by any chance, Edmund? Uh, next up is the Panzer 3N. So this has the Schutzen on the side, uh, which means it has a bit more armor, which is great. And fairly uniquely, it actually has more armor on the back than it does on the sides, which uh, I only just noticed. That's pretty interesting. Still only 10 armor on the top row, so like, uh, like a lot of vehicles, it's going to be vulnerable to heavy artillery uh, landing on top of it. And uh, you don't want to have enemy vehicles in an elevated position against you, because there is a chance they'll hit the top armor. Um, but these are a little bit more survivable, with 70 armor on the front, which is great. Uh, and quite a bit of uh, AP attack in comparison as well, so that's quite nice. For this stage of the campaign. I do look forward to getting access to uh, the heavier units, though. Next up, we've got the 5cm Pack 38. Um, so, this is a little bit of a lighter AT gun. Um, it's not as expensive as the 7.5cm Pack, but it's not got quite as much uh, capability to kill enemy tanks either. So, something to consider. If you are put into a position where you've bought a bunch of expensive units, and you need to be a bit uh, careful, or just can't afford, outright afford uh, the heavier anti-tank guns, then the 5cm pack and the 7.5cm pack are decent options. And then finally we've got the 8.8cm. Uh, so this is the biggest AT gun, um, at least at the moment, that we have access to. Uh, this will punch a hole through just about any vehicle we'll encounter. Uh, tank, 
half track doesn't really matter it it's gonna hurt whatever it's uh whatever it shoots at we've then got the 8.8 .8 centimeter flak so this can actually do uh, anti-aircraft fire it can intercept enemy aircraft within its attack range unless its overwatch is disabled so you do want to avoid this being spotted and hit by artillery um, if, if you can um, but this will help to actually disrupt any enemy close air support which is quite helpful meet tactic best tactic attrition war rules <laughs> well my name is uh, Yog attrition war dog for a reason uh, Mr. Nexus Hey Fee, good morning to you. So our last option here is the 15cm SFH-18. So this is the heavy artillery we get access to for Germany in the campaign this early on. And I'm going to be swapping probably the Kubelwagen for this. Um, I do want to make sure that I have some heavy artillery at my disposal. Uh, I think this will be a fine choice personally. Now a couple of things to consider. Uh, here as well is uh, leveling up our forces so over time as your troops fight in battle they will gain veterancy uh, I think it's mostly based on the amount of kills they get um, but by doing so you unlock the option to uh, specialize that particular unit so this Panzer free N as an example in the first battle we did uh, has actually managed to get enough veterancy to to pay for some uh, pay for an upgrade here so we can go for veteran units morale is increased by 50 it means it's less vulnerable to uh, overwhelming fire causing the morale of the unit to drop um, things like I mentioned it a lot but artillery are very good at doing that um, this negates that happening too much Alternatively, we can just flat out make it more accurate and henceforth do more damage because uh, if it's hitting more, it's going to do more damage, it's going to contribute to the battle more. I personally think I'm going to go for the accuracy here, um, which I, I just want the additional damage over the course of a battle. The additional morale is nice though, um, maybe on something like a heavy tank, uh, just to make sure that... Uh, we're able to utilize it at full effectiveness. Uh, attacks which hit something like a heavy tank aren't necessarily going to do much in terms of damage, but will uh, cause morale to drop. So putting that on a heavier unit is definitely a consideration. But for this one, we're going to go for the accuracy. Uh, the other thing to consider here is heroes. So over the course of the campaigns and also in skirmish mode, you do get powerful heroes, which you can add to your various units. Uh, for example, here we have Adolf Reininghaus. I am very sorry to any uh, Germans in chat if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but these give additional buffs to the unit they're attached to. Now this can only be, uh, this particular hero, can only be assigned to infantry squads. Um, things like our riflemen, uh, anti-tank flamethrowers, etc. So, uh, the unit's damage is doubled, which is crazy good. Uh, the unit restores all its crew at the start of the turn, which is also crazy good. Uh, and commanding presence, all infantry units within 1.5 range gain plus 30 accuracy. So there's quite a few things to consider here as to where I would like to put him in. If I'm going for the glass cannon outright want to damage the enemy as much as possible, I think snipers would be a good shout to attach to this hero. Alternatively, just buffing my general infantryman and having a powerful squad to fall back on would be uh, a good shout as well. Or if I want to go armor hunting, uh, buffing a unit of anti-tank could be uh, a good shout here. Personally, I think we just put him into a rifleman squad. Hey Kalania, good to see you. Yes, new game. So just very quickly, um, before we do go any further, just uh, a reminder of the schedule for today. Uh, so I'll be playing for the next hour or so. Um, I'll be playing until complete scenario two. Um, 
after me, uh, so at 15.30 CET, um, it will be the release event. Uh, so that will be going on for an hour and a half. And then at 1700 hours CET, it will be tea time as normal. Uh, and there will be a special interview uh, with the lead designer for the game, uh, Alexander. And then finally, uh, Richard York will be doing the launch stream later today at 17.13 uh, hours CET as well. So there's a lot of headquarters World War II to look forward to today. And there'll be additional streams. Uh, I think Richard York, for example, has another stream tomorrow at 6 p.m. So there's plenty of headquarters to look forward to over the coming days on Slytherin TV. All right. Um, so... First things first, what's the sign of Rifleman here? Uh, the hero, so uh, uh, Adolf Reininghouse has been attached. We have leveled up all the troops we can. It was only our Panzer Free, which had enough uh, veterancy. And then I'm going to swap the machine guns for... I think the artillery here. So that gives me Heavy Artillery, Kubel Wagon, Flamethrowers, Panzer Free, Rifleman Scouts. I don't want the Kubel Wagon. I think I'm going to go for some Snipers. Do I go for Snipers or do I go for Mortars? I could also go for a second set of Artillery here. I would need to buy a truck. It's stretching my prestige to its breaking point, but I think we're going to do that. Um, and I'm not actually going to use any uh, mechanized half-tracks this time around. So that's going to be what I go for. And the reason I'm going for double artillery here is if we uh, go back here and go to the officer skills area. So over time, you will unlock skill points. Um, by completing missions as well as secondary objectives um, and these can be used to specialize your force as a whole so there are three different trees you can go down armor infantry and artillery I'm probably gonna go down well I, I'm definitely gonna be going down the artillery tree again here um, which is the reason I bought two artillery pieces there but uh, if say using many tanks is your thing uh, then you can go down the armor tree here so these have a lot of different things they do so as an example going down the artillery tree we get additional uh, he attack so just a very nice general buff to our artillery we then get a choice between going for a 10 percent accuracy uh, or no longer receives exposed position negative effect after firing which means that its camouflage is not reduced after firing. Henceforth, your uh, artillery is a bit safer if you do that. Now, um, you will need to choose one of these as you go down um, the tree, but you can put, you don't have to fully just go for one tree and not locked in. You can put as many points in as you have anyway into each tree. So if I wanted, I could go both artillery and infantry here, I believe. So let's learn shooting practice and then thrill. But uh, so you can go down multiple trees. So let's go shooting practice. And I'm going to go for high precision. I want my artillery to be a bit more accurate. Maybe uh, maybe see what sort of damage we can do in this scenario. That's all of our skill points used. Uh, just briefly going through the others. So we get things like uh, for our infantry. We gain accuracy until the start of next turn if we deal damage to an, uh, to an enemy. Uh, do, 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 do. Spotting for artillery makes artillery more accurate against that particular unit, which is quite nice. Uh, each attack on any enemy unit will increase the damage that unit's morale by 5% until the end of the turn, and it can stack up to five times. So all these little buffs, and you, you will want to go through and check what they all are. Uh, all really add character to your force and help you to really specialize in what you want to focus on. Uh, me, I'm very much a heavy artillery kind of guy, so that's why I'm going down the uh, artillery route here. 
So lastly, there's the awards area here. So over time as you complete the missions and any secondary objectives, you will earn additional awards. And here, well, they get showcased quite nicely. So I think we're ready to go here. So very quickly, just a uh, explanation of the mission. Captain, the British paratroopers are in control of the bridges over the River Orne and the Carn Canal. The bridges lead straight to the Allied landing area. If we capture Rose, we'll be able to drown the enemy in the waters they came from. The number of enemy paratroopers is small and they are well aware of it. Get ready for ambushes, recon first, moving in second. The good news is you'll have tank support. Pandas will quickly douse their vigor. If you play to your strengths, this mission should be easy enough. We'll have to see whether that's the case or not. Good morning to you, Grim Nurson. Hope you're having a good day today. Mm -hmm. I do hate tea, very truthy. I'm a, I'm a traitor to all Englishmen in that I hate tea. Artillery is very strong. Okay, let's, uh, let's dive into battle, shall we? And see what sort of trouble we can get into. Back to defend the two bridges leading over the Orn and Con rivers. Not only have the Tommy paratroopers already beaten us to them, but we seem to be in the dark with our radio communications too. We must retake what we've lost. Drive the enemy off those bridges. Fatherland might still have something to celebrate today. All right. So, uh, one of the benefits we've got here is all of our troops are motorized. Uh, which gives them additional radius they can uh, they can move in. Does mean if they get caught in the trucks so they're a little bit vulnerable. Now something to note very quickly is we only have core units in this scenario at the minute. Um, but plenty of other scenarios give you additional troops which aren't core. They don't carry over to mission to mission. Whereas these ones do. A core unit is denoted by the chevrons below their banner here. Um, so, you'll want to try and get as much uh, damage using these units in order to maximize their experience. So, something to note uh, moving forward. On the right hand side here, we do have various abilities we can use. Uh, so, this particular scenario gives us the rally and reinforcement abilities, which are uh, available in pretty much every scenario, I believe. But in addition, we also have air recon and dive bombers. Now, I have seen things like naval bombardment, so sometimes these do get swapped out for other things. Um, typically, using these in tandem with each other is particularly strong because you uh, can't kill what you can't see. Air recon is an, an excellent uh, addition to uh, your force. Just scouting, scouting is key. Uh, I'm unsure, sorry, Fee. Conrad, in short, we're in the shit. Not acceptable. Panzer awaiting orders. Okay, let's push up. Now, do I actually scout here? Um, I should, because they hold the bridge. I feel I'm going to use the air econ to look at the bridge and see if there's anything nearby. So, call for an aviation reconnaissance of the target area. The recon plane has 10 spotting and can locate the enemy units following the regular spotting rules. So, let's right click. Now we have Luftwaffe recon support. Has our plane spotted anything? Alas, it has not. Get our Panzer free to uh, push forward a little bit, but not fully. So, when you're planning your actions, you can just do it piecemeal. You don't just get one movement and done. Um, so, if you want to slowly creep up, that's very much possible here, and uh, very much, I'd say, encouraged as well. Charging forwards, as anyone who's watched me play the game the last couple of days will attest to. Uh, very much leads to high casualties uh, when you get ambushed, so uh, it's quite important in general to uh, be careful with your advances, I'd argue. 
there is room to be uh, hyper aggressive, as uh, as I've shown in the last couple of streams. But uh, you do run the risk of getting caught out and flat footed. So um, something to consider. So I don't think leaving my troops in the transport here would be a good idea. So utilizing the skill on the bar here, and the majority of uh, well, pretty much all your skills you'll get uh, on this bar for you, from unit to unit. Um, we're going to drop the infantry off here, Scouts so this is my scouts. And I'm just going to keep the uh, transport safe at the back here. Okay, so that's the flamethrowers as well. Transport on its way. What orders, sir? March! Okay. Transport awaiting orders. Now it's just the two artillery. I want to be a bit careful with where I set these up. I'm a little bit worried that if I set them up where they are basically at the minute, if there's any opponents on the other side of the river here in range, they're just going to shoot and kill them. So I'm probably going to try and get them set up in this field here, ASAP. Now, one of the neat additions um, is this. So by pressing Y, you will open a uh, box which shows you all cover, uh, movement point costs, uh, camouflage, etc in the tile you are looking at. This is going to be crucial to keep your troops alive. Um, I would very much advise at all times, unless it's really desperate um, or you absolutely know there's no units in the area from the enemy, that you try and keep your, your own forces in cover. Uh, just to try and mitigate any damage taken um, in order to keep them combat effective or in combat at all is very easily uh, done to have a full unit wiped out and then you've no longer got access to uh, their abilities or their combat strength whereas if they do take a, a bit of damage you can reinforce them uh, using this ability every four turns so even if a unit goes down to one model you can bring it back up to full combat effectiveness within a few turns um, if it's on cooldown so, What's our destination, sir? these trucks are going to move further into the wheat field next Engine turn. Up and ready. Heading to new position. Moving out. The uh, the trees there are going to help obscure uh, any attacks from coming from outside, which is good. Scouts reporting. I'm going to leave the infantry in the uh, field here, just to give it a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more cover. The high vegetation gives a 40% cover bonus, which is quite nice. Ready to serve the we have 40 turns in this particular scenario, so we've got plenty of turns to work with. We're not going to try and rush this too heavily. Uh, we're going to try and take our time and inch our way forward. So we need to take this position here and here on bridge one, and then we need to take the central position next to the farmhouse at the center of the map. Uh, there may well be more objectives, uh, primary objectives, but those are the ones uh, we need to go for right now. And there will be secondary objectives we'll need to complete during the course of the scenario as well. Um, those aren't a necessity, but it is very much beneficial to do so. They give additional prestige, um, which you can spend on units in between missions and uh, give additional officer awards as well, uh, the officer skills. Alright, let's uh, end turn one here. Was from the Our armoured support has been stopped by Tommy Fire to the south. They're in a bad way, but if we can help them out immediately, then we can get that armour moving again. I would like additional armour. So what have we got? We got uh, Panzer 4H and a Panzer 3E. So, uh... That's going to be the first of our proper medium armor, really. With uh, access to an actual gun to kill armored units. I suppose the Panzer Freeze can do it, but they're not going to be too reliable. What orders, sir? We'll locate the enemy. 
So we need to join forces with the tank unit. I'm sure we're probably going to pincer on something here because I'm relatively certain there's going to be some uh, some Tommies in the area to deal with. Form up. Onwards. Transport awaiting orders. Right, let's get the transports out of the way. I do want to keep these alive. Just need to uh, make sure I get my artillery set up here. So we're going to dismount those. Which means we have four shells per turn we can drop on an unsuspecting opponent now. It can be very useful. Uh, to dig enemies out of buildings, uh, demoralize particularly uh, nasty enemies we face. The enemy took our field HQ as well. I don't know if that means it's the Tommies causing the problems with our radios, but we still need to deal with this. Let's take it. We sure and do. If we can get our communications back. Scouts reporting. Okay, let's push forward with the scouts. I'm actually going to use the scout ability, see if there is anything uh, within three tiles. Doesn't seem like there is. Okay, uh, Panzer Free is in a good position there. So next turn I get access to my air. Recon again. The enemy is making use of our vehicle repair workshop. I find it shameful that they were allowed to take it from us at all. More so if they are allowed to keep it. Take it back. So we need to join forces with the tank unit. Uh, that's this one here. We need to capture the radio tower without destroying the building. Uh, so that's over here on the west side of the map. And then. Also on the west side, but further to the southwest, really. Uh, we need to capture the workshop again without destroying the building. So that basically means that artillery is a no-go. Um, I'm going to need to keep my flamethrowers alive uh, to try and clear those out if they're occupied. Scouts heading out. Okay. Scouts, again, do not spot anything. I'm gonna air recon the other side of the river here. Is there anything uh, hiding? I'm not seeing out. Orders received. So one of the things with vehicles is, uh, as we mentioned uh, in the uh, the intermission area, armor is important, and because of that you need to make sure that you're rotating so your highest armor value is showing towards the enemy which is typically the frontal armor uh, so this ability here the rotate function you're gonna want to be using this a fair bit uh, just pointing your tanks uh, half tracks whatever sort of vehicle um, which is meant to be on the front lines and taking fire uh, you you're gonna want to use this to point towards suspected or outright known enemy positions so something to be aware of I don't know where they are I'm showing full side armor across the bridge here I don't think considering we're going up against British paratroopers here that they're gonna have too many vehicles um, if any at all I know that uh, British glider units in World War 2 did have uh, I think tetrarchs so it's entirely possible but something like that could be uh, could be rare, but I don't know for certain what they have. If you're so used to AMX 30s, you'll happily take any Kubel wagon with a pistol under the seat. Just pull a Fury on the bridge yet. Now that's a movie I uh, enjoyed watching. It's been a while since I uh, watched that one. Scouts reporting. All right. I'm not using a dive bomber until I spot an actual uh, opponent now here. We begin. I could just charge across the bridge line. Uh, do I charge across the bridge line here? Ready to serve the uh, how how sir. silly am I feeling, chap? I'm feeling pretty silly. Forward. What's the worst that could happen, right? Moving. Yeah, that's two. What orders, sir? 
We'll locate the enemy. Move, move. Okay. Well, first thing I'm going to do is actually bring these back up to full strength. And uh, it's time for our artillery to start knocking here. So, whenever you use a unit and hover over what you want to shoot at, you'll see what your percentage chance to hit is. So, uh, using our indirect artillery here, we have a 25% chance to hit for 1 to 3 damage. So one to three damage is one to three casualties. Um, they're just outright kills. So I can't fully kill this unit in one hit if I connect, but I can do potentially quite a lot of uh, of casualties. You have scouting work if I use something like my scouts, which are adjacent to them here, so the, the figure on the left uh, is what my attack uh, chance to hit is, as well as the potential damage output. The figure on the right in red is what their counter attack would be doing, their reaction. So, uh, their overwatch. You, you need to be uh, very considerate of that if you do decide to make sure that uh, you, you commit to an attack here. Artillery. Alternatively, what you can do is using something like artillery. And this is where combined arms comes in. Even if you miss with your attack, you will cause morale damage. Now, do enough morale damage. Scouts reporting. And I've not quite done enough there. Uh, let's drop another round. Do enough morale damage, they will be demoralized. Which uh, actually reduces their combat effectiveness. In addition, uh, as we've just done there, something like a heavy artillery piece and mortars can do it as well, although it takes a little bit longer will cause damage to any cover, well, buildings mostly, uh, which uh, whatever you're fighting is is in. And over time, with enough fire, you can just outright destroy the cover they're in. So we went from, what, a 38% chance up to a 78 now by shooting our um, scouts here, which is quite nice. Waiting to rain down here. So I'm going to drop the last shell which now has a 52% chance. Miss. Recheck target coordinates. Alas, we once again miss. Pans are ready. Our other infantry can't really uh, get into the fray this turn, and our, pa uh, our panzers are too far away. So I'm just going to rely on my scouts and probably the dive bomber here. Dive bomber support. They're having a very bad day. So the dive bomber very much hits there, annihilates three fifths of the squad, and then Panzer awaiting orders. I think our Panzer is going to finish the job. Uh, hey T two, what are the campaigns in this game? I think I saw German, British, and American. Yes, uh, so there are German, British, and American campaigns with nine scenarios apiece. Aren't I wait, uh, wasting too much resources on a single squad? Uh, a, a good thing to uh, to say, but I think, Tombo. Normally I'd say probably yes, but we've not seen any other opponents like, we can shoot at right now. So because it's the only unit I've spotted, I may as well just focus fire and eliminate it as a threat. Um, Until I, I've spotted any any other things to shoot at, then um, it's fine. But normally, normally I'd agree. I would need to spread my fire out a bit more, especially with the artillery. Hyper focusing with artillery on a unit like that, unless it's a really uh, dangerous opponent, is is probably suboptimal. But uh, for this particular use case, it, it's fine. I think. Yes, it's a we uh, it's based in on the Western Front T two. Are there dif uh, different difficulty levels for this game? Yes, there are. I think there's five difficulty levels in total. Uh, I'm on challenging difficulty, which is three out of five. Uh, there are short cinematics playing to visualize the move slash actions. Never seen something like that, but it looks good. Yes, there are Grim Nelson. Um, for those who want to watch them, uh, just. 
let them roll and it's quite nice. For those who do want to skip them, you just need to uh, use a mouse button and uh, you skip them. So, for people who like the cinematics, it's pretty good. For people who don't want to watch them, it's very easily skipped as well. Alright, I think we're good here to end turn. Oh. Enemy mortars. Okay, and an enemy anti-tank team. Oh. Oh, that's not good. That's a, very much the definition of not good. Now the problem is, I don't really know where they are. And my scouts can't get there quickly enough. What I could consider doing here Artillery is using my more forward artillery piece to drop some smoke to obscure the tank here to keep it alive. Uh, ah. I might have to move it a bit further forward here. Engine warmed up and ready. So let's move this artillery piece up. Even then I can't do it, so I think you need to actually have direct fire to drop the smoke. Interesting. Okay. What are my other options? The scouts can rush up. They can chuck it two tiles, so even if I get very close they're not going to be able to really properly obscure here. Scouts heading out. What I could also do then is, I think we saw it in this tile here. Do I go for just trying to hit something if it's there? No more misses. Reload. I also want to make sure I drop around on the mortars here, so. Let's do that. This. We check target coordinates. Okay, artillery is uh, not hitting right now, but it's fine. It's still hitting their morale, which is important. You love the small scale as compared to say, the general games? Yeah, it's uh, it's quite nice to have something like uh, it's probably around about a platoon size, maybe just over for some of the the bigger scenarios. It's refreshing, you know. Not everything needs to be uh, supersized in scale. Transport awaiting orders. Heading to new position. Waiting to Okay, let's get ahead. the artillery to drop around here. Very nice hit. It's unlikely we hit again at 38%, but uh, I think I'm going to go, go for it here. Cease fire. Target eliminated. Very nice. No more mortars to worry about. What orders, sir? I really wish I could help this tank, but I feel it's probably Soldiers, done for. Form up. Ready to deploy on your orders. The Rifle flamethrowers and the Rush. riflemen are going to move across the bridge here. Scout the scouts promoted. are going to stay and hopefully help the uh, the Panzer IV here. We've already pushed forward the artillery a bit more here. Let's end turn. Now we begin. What orders, sir? Our panzers are clear and back in the fight. It takes a lot to stop these things for good. And that gives us a Panzer IV we can use, which is the more dangerous of the two tanks. I'm very happy to uh, we'll have that. And um, thanks to using the scouts well, scout function here, we we're, were able to spot the anti-tank team. So what we're going to do here is drop some artillery on it. Pat Patting uh, Pattington, thank you very much for that follow. I uh, hope you're having a good day today. <laughs> Given Yogg didn't watch Downfall, didn't play Panzer General, I assume he didn't play Blitzkrieg either. I can eat night 
I can neither confirm nor deny that that is the case. No more misses. Reload. Miss. We okay, morale is uh, not looking so hot Artillery for it, which for I'm happy with. They are demoralized, which means no reaction fire. Just a warm -up. And they're now grazed. Ready to serve the fatherland, sir. So I'm Order going seat. to hope yeah, these these are pretty dead here, I suspect. Revenge for our compatriots. One anti tank team destroyed. And the Panzer IV freed up to go help out for our central push. So I'm not going to expand my beachhead on the other side of the river here too much. But I am going to start moving our forces a bit further forward. I'm also going to get my artillery set up uh, slightly better positionally here. Let's put one here and one here. Hey, Pinyosil. Can I just run over him, CNC style? That would be hilarious if I could. Uh, alas, I don't think that's an option. I may be wrong, but I haven't seen it. I suppose overrun could be it. Storms the enemy positions in the adjacent tile and occupies the opponent's tile. The enemy unit is eliminated. Yeah, I could just imagine that as uh, driving over the enemy troops. Form up. Now we begin. Scouts reporting. Move, move. Okay, let's get the Panzer IV and the scouts moved up, and let's get our infantry into the tree line here. Riflemen reporting. So the trees give sixty percent cover, uh, twenty armor, and free camouflage. So heavy forested terrain like that is extremely helpful for infantry. Always try and keep uh, your units as safe as possible. What orders, sir? Okay, now I'll end turn can... here. What orders, sir? March. Ready to deploy on your orders. You have scouting work for us? Ready I do have scouting work for you. Sir. I need you to keep moving forwards. Let's air now recon this position and see if there's anything hidden on the next location we need to cap. We didn't see anything, so that's good. There is a glider which dropped nearby. So I'm going to assume that uh, there's going to be some more forces in the area. Okay, send turn there. Does the game have multiplayer, uh, PBM style? Uh, I haven't tried it out, sorry, uh, Grim Nelson. Uh, so I'm unsure. Rifleman, I will go look on the menu after this for you, ready. What orders, sir? Awaiting orders. Right, I'm gonna Soldiers, take a calculated warm risk. Forty percent cover. Okay, so there was something in the trees. Uh, sorry, in the building here, and we were spotted in the trees. Are orders. Let's uh, move the Panzer free a bit further forward. So the uh, short barrel 75 here is going to be tailor made for this sort of engagement, really. But as per standard, the first thing we do is soften them up with a bit of artillery fire. No more misses. Reload. Miss. Recheck target coordinates. And then I think we'll uh, shoot with the tank here. So 82% chance. The artillery opened up a couple of holes in the walls, which made them a bit more vulnerable. And uh, that just outright destroyed the building, which means uh, we can possibly fully wipe out anything that remains here. We aren't quite able to, but they're having a very bad night, it's fair to say. And this is just guaranteed to kill. A minor hit only. Excellent. 
Battle Isle 2. That's not one I'm familiar with, unfortunately. Is this uh, another classic I need to go back and play? Because uh, I feel like I'm going to be made to play uh, Panzer General at some stage. I think Necrotic Nexus is going to have a... Uh, he's going to revolt if I don't. Scouts reporting. Scouts heading out. Okay, keep pushing in. I'm tempted to bring my artillery forward, but I'm going to scout the positions here a bit more before I do. Uh, I don't want to put them, say, plop them down here, and then there's something hidden in the buildings to cause me problems. So we're going to have a bit more of a look around, I think. Let's put you in the tree line. Let's end turn. Oh. They do have armor. Thankfully, it doesn't do too much. My Panzer Free is down to only two crewmen remaining. So, an important thing to note is with vehicles uh, and infantry squads as well, to some degree, um, as you lose crew you lose uh, effectiveness. So the commander, gunner, load have all been lost here. So the uh, the machine gun isn't being manned at the minute, which means this won't get access to additional HE damage if within a certain range of uh, opponents you're fighting. So it's uh, very much a thing to we'll note. Lose, we'll locate the enemy. So what is this? Uh, it is a Cromwell. Let's drop uh, some bombs on it here. It's going to do a little bit of damage. We're also going to use reinforcement on the Panzer Free to try and keep it alive. And then the Panzer IV. As much as the Panzer IV has got more chance of killing, it's not a core unit and I want to try and maximise the amount of kills my core units get. So this is an example you can see here, it doesn't have the chevrons. That means this unit is a one and done. We won't have it in the next scenario. Whereas this one with the chevrons, we will. This is part of our core forces. So that's just expanding on what we were talking about at the start here. So the Panzer Free End doesn't really do too much damage. Like uh, The most it can do is one. And if I were to attack here, it would get a shot to return fire, and it would do a minimum of one and up to three damage. I want to avoid that. Artillery waiting for orders. And the Cromwell is in range of artillery, so I think you all know what time it is. No more misses. Reload. Yes. We check target okay. coordinates. Waiting to rain down hell. Good hits. No more misses. Reload. Okay, morale is really bad. And because of that, it will no longer return fire. So we can shoot at will at it. Perfect. So by destroying the Cromwell, we have put a wreck on the bridge here. That will need to be cleared. Any mechanized unit, so tanks, half tracks, etc., can, uh, can clear wrecks. So we're going to get our Panzer free to do that soon. Panzer ready. You have scouting work for us. All right. Do I move the artillery up? Not quite. I want to clear now, it, uh, this side of the river first. Soldiers, form up. Flamethrowers reporting. Paratroopers are falling back. Secure the position and prepare for enemy counterattack. Enemy counterattack, you say? Still down. I have no means of talking with command. I know this much, though. The colonel will want us to hold the bridges with all we've got. Do not let the Tommies push us back again, comrades. Hmm. Okay, we need to hold the key points for six turns. And if I want to do secondaries, I'm going to need to push and push now. Do I do I risk it with the Panzer Free? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. So let's say I do lose one of my core units here, the Panzer Free. 
Um, I would get it back in the next scenario. So you can be a bit risky with your troops, even the ones persistent between missions. Um, you just got to remember, you need to also complete the mission. So I'm a little bit worried they drop something over here. And if they push over onto my artillery, then that would be bad. So I'm going to push the scouts back across the river. Ready to serve the I think the Panzer IV is probably going to hold on this side. What orders, sir? Awaiting orders. Okay, send turn there. Now we begin. So the workshop building is over here, the radio tower is over here. I have to send an infantry unit over, so I think I'm going to have to put the flamethrowers forward here. Oh, hello, man. Hmm. This is uh, not ideal, and they did drop some forces right next to my artillery. I mean, they didn't have a very good day, bro. The side hero is just part of the normal crew and can therefore die. Uh, so, uh, yes, that does seem to be the case. So this is our assigned hero here. That being said, I think if you just replenish it using the reinforcement, uh, say your commander here dies, um, I think it just brings the hero back. So. Why did you ever have to shoot Will? What did they ever do to me? Uh, typical Kiwi NZ, they looked at me funny. Or maybe they uh, maybe they stole my Panzer Chocolade. That, that's probably a better answer. Yeah, they, they stole my Panzer Chocolade. Engine warmed up and ready. Heading to new position. Oh. Oh, there was more of them there. Uh... Waiting to rain down here. Oh, okay. Waiting I guess bye bye artillery. <laughs> I've very much been caught out here. Riflemen reporting. Panzer awaiting so my Panzer is in a risky position. Ready to serve the fatherland, sir. Would the experience be gone? Uh, I think you retain. You definitely retain experience between. Uh, missions so um, this Panzer 3 has like 1.5 experience stars it actually has two now which means okay not quite it's very close to getting two stars uh, in mission if you do manage to level up your unit you can assign the new um, whatever the relevant trait is so next up would be unstoppable or crafty additional armor or uh, 50 cent bonus to its base morale. Interesting. However, um, if you lose it in the mission, you do keep your XP. So You can afford to be quite risky with, with them if you want to be. Artillery ready. What's our destination, sir? I'm going to try and get this artillery to safety. Just because the other one's dead doesn't mean I just outright risk that one for no reason. Uh, so that's okay. Awaiting orders. March. Panzer awaiting orders. Moving. And I'm gonna try and help out with the Panzer IV Our next shot will do more damage. onto this squad Our here. Next shot will do more damage. That was pretty nice. Ready to serve the fatherland, sir. Fifty-two percent chance, one to two. Okay. Our next shot will do more damage. Uh, deflected, excellent. Yeah, they are demoralized. And we deflected the next attack as well. Very good. I'm just going to leave the, uh, the trucks to distract Rees because they're going to take damage if I try and do anything anyway. Hank free they missed. That one didn't miss. Not bad at all. 
think I'll take that. Let's end turn. Oh, they got more armor down there. Ugh. Okay. That's uh, that's a bit of a feels bad. I'm definitely gonna move the artillery over to the central area here, and I'm gonna bring probably this infantry squad to try and support. Now we begin. Yeah, there go all my trucks basically. Engine warmed up and ready. Transport on its way. You have scouting work for okay. us. Okay, uh, let's see. Now we have let's see what we can spot. Reason. Hey, Slober. Ubix spray can. Good to see you. Hope you both uh, both doing Artillery well. Waiting for orders. Forty-eight percent chance. No more misses. Reload. That's unfortunate. Also unfortunate. Okay. Uh, form up. Let's start getting this infantry unit moved over. Ready to deploy on your orders. Orders received. Oh, okay. They actually have another awaiting unit. Orders. Panzer awaiting orders. Can I uh reporting? Ready to serve the fatherland, sir. So it's just that one. Again, they weren't quite fully destroyed. Let's change rats. Ready to deploy on your orders. Pans are ready. And there's another formation in here as well. Now the problem with this one is for the secondary objective I need to not destroy the building. So that basically means using my flamethrowers. I can't drop artillery on it, alas. Waiting to rain down hell. I think we're doing alright at the minute, Slober. We'll see if we can uh, fully finish it off here. Now we begin. Alright, let's bring the Panzer free back to full strength here. I'm gonna try and take its overwatch. Yeah, I take two crit damage. It's not awaiting great. Panzer awaiting orders. Do I just fire a shot at them anyway? Just to reduce the amount of incoming fire from an attack? Yeah. Very nice. I'm going to get the flamethrower into the building here and then next Ready turn it's going to push in. Uh, in the meantime... Riflemen reporting! Onwards! Scouts reporting. Right, they're going to push back onto us here. I think this Panzer IV is going to need to help out on the other side, personally. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> okay, so that's uh, a good point to mention that uh, return fire for vehicles. Uh, so, uh, turreted uh, vehicles like tanks, for example, can actually return fire in a 360 degree arc, which is great. Uh, but something which doesn't have a turret, like say a Stug, I can only actually return fire in a 90 degree arc on where it's facing towards. So that's uh, one of the, the big advantages of that's having uh, turreted vehicles. Ready to serve the fatherland, sir. Okay. Radio station captured, but we're still only getting static on command. Excellent. 
So I need to push and take this position next. We're going to rally the tank just in case. Let's actually start full. Okay, that's not too bad. Morale, that's not a problem. One of the things I do need to do is uh, shift the artillery here so it's not blocking the road. And the Panzer IV can go back forwards. What orders, sir? Moving out. Infantry are in a pretty good position here. Dive bomber support. Let's drop some bombs on this infantry. I don't like this game due to too much do not destroy the building objectives. You are very much a fan of collateral damage by any chance then, uh, Mr. Nexus, like myself. And Duke of Many Things, thank you very much for that follow. Hope you're having a good day today as well. Miss. We check target coordinates. Okay, excellent. Reduce uh, morale. What Can't really do too much else about when this turn, I think. I only need to hold for two more turns. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to take this last secondary objective, alas. Is there anything now even here? I mean, it's not guaranteed we see it with our aircraft, but we can go take a look. There is, actually. I'm not even going to try and send the Panzer free over. Now, I think the way you do the secondary on this mission, then, is don't take the objective at the third key point, bypass it, go complete both these objectives, and then pull back. Even at this stage, we've only got one turn left um, in term to actually hold the primary. We still have 24 turns left in the entire scenario, which we could uh, could play with. So I think uh, I think that's going to be your tactic in order to make sure that if you're a completionist you and want to complete all the secondary objectives, uh, that's how you complete it. Very nice. Outright wiped them in one volley. Very happy about that. And that's thanks to our commander doubling damage. The hero we attached to our rifleman squad. So, very, very happy with that particular attack. Panzer Chocolate, Armor Chocolate. Uh, yes. Um, it's quite a famous item during World War Two. Uh, and what they put into it, although I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> I'll leave uh, people to do their research on that. It wasn't in all Panzer Chocolade. Some of it is a bit of a myth, but it's quite fun reading. Okay. Uh, they are demoralised. That's fine. We don't mind that. Scouts reporting. So, let's go for the other squad here. They are now also demoralized. I'm feeling confident enough to put my scouts forward here. Enemy position located. I've spotted what both of these are. So we've got a 57 and a 51. Let's go for the 57 first. We are successful. And the 51. Fire. Alas, we miss. They don't know. They uh, returned fire and hit two of our our squad there. Pans are ready. Oh, oh, <laughs> that was not uh, not good for them. We do have more equipment moving in against us here. We've got an M3 Stewart, an anti-tank team, and a rifleman. But we are holding Scout, them off. Uh, I'll drop some cursory artillery on them. The AT team, mostly, because I want to make sure that we keep our Panzer IV alive. 
I think we answer that. We can. But the enemy has us surrounded and outgunned. Once they close their trap, we will be left with no choice but to surrender or die. Uh, it, it might be. It could just be something very much inspired by it. I, I, I think we'd have to ask the uh, the game designer your way through the Tommy for that one to the southeast road salvaging our lives out of this godforsaken day will be victory yeah it's very much mr nexus okay evacuate our troops so we need to pull our forces back onto this side so Panzer awaiting orders uh, do, 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 do. how are we gonna do that you know, just keep these scouts alive. I think we'd use reinforcements on the scouts, and these are just gonna push across, and we're gonna smoke grenade. I think. Scouts heading out. We'll locate the enemy. It's not great, but it'll do. Should help a little bit to keep them alive. March. Artillery waiting for orders. This. Recheck target coordinates. No more misses. Reload. Okay. Let's board the transport and we're going to start trying to get these out of here as well. What's our destination, sir? Okay. Now so no. we begin. In which case, the Oxen Bucks Regiment are coming for you. Run away! Run away! <laughs> oh, trust me, that's what I'm going to do here. Perfidious Albion has uh, caused me many issues. You have scouting work for us? Move, move. Oh, no, the Overwatch. Thankfully, it doesn't actually connect. Ah, uh, that did some damage. We'll take it. Now, we begin. Engine warmed up and ready. Panzer awaiting orders. Okay, five. I uh, just need to get my scouts out of that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. I think my scouts might be. Uh, yeah, they're done for. We've made it out. Just. There's no shame in it, comrades. We're not the only ones forced to retreat today. The Americans crushed our defenses along the coast. It's been a hard day for the fatherland, but we're at least still alive to find glory another day. There are countless more of our countrymen who aren't so lucky. Victory for the fatherland. All right, so uh, we got access to the Panzer 4H, which is great. We did manage to kill a fair few units. Unfortunately, our artillery didn't fare so well, but we do get that replenished automatically. Um, and I got one of the awards available, but I didn't quite do the other objective, uh, secondary objective, which was to capture the vehicle repair workshop. However, we're going to finish the operation there. Uh, so as you can see, our core units uh, have been replenished, so all of our trucks, scouts, etc. Uh, and this would be scenario three, the Battle of villas Bacage, which is uh, quite a famous battle. So if we go walk really quickly, we can see that we have access to new units. Uh, so we've got SD, KFZ, 234, uh, slash 2s. We have Panzer 4Hs, Stug 3Gs. So the further you get into the game, um, the more units you will unlock. Uh, eventually things like Panthers, Tiger 1s, Tiger 2s um, will be available for you to use. Uh, however, we are basically at the end of the stream here so let's go back to the main menu really quick and then i will regale you with the schedule for today uh, so there's a lot of headquarters world war ii uh, to look forward to uh, so at 15 30 cet uh, there's going to be the release event taking place um, again on slivering tv here uh, so just in a few hours time at 1700 hours cet It'll be tea time, um, which will be with, uh, I think it's going to be Marco hosting, but 
yes, it's going to be Marco hosting with Alexander, the lead game designer at Starney Games, uh, the developers of this game. Uh, so if you do have any questions for the game, uh, tea time is at 1700 hours CET. And then finally, uh, afterwards, Richard York will be doing a special launch stream for the game as well. In addition, over the, over the coming weeks, there's plenty of Headquarters World War II, uh, II streams to look forward to on the channel as well. Uh, however, that is going to be me for today. Uh, a huge thank you to everyone in chat for watching. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, playing some Headquarters World War II for you all. I hope you've enjoyed this preview uh, and uh, hope to see you later today. Thank you very, very much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. We will catch you next time.